Hi, I'm John Santero, retired LA County Fire Captain. Because of what we deal with and the stress uh, and just the, what we see out there when we're working, uh, sometimes uh, first responders will bring that home and it will influence and affect their family. Uh, marriages sometimes uh, are in trouble because of what we do at work. Um, how we parent is sometimes affected by what we see, the trauma we see at, uh, in the job place. And, uh, and so that all builds up, that stress builds up and then sooner or later if we don't deal with it, then it can erupt and it can not just damage the individual, the first responder, but the loved ones that that first responder lives with. I wanted to become a firefighter because I saw these guys as superheroes. I saw these guys as bigger than life. And it wasn't until I got into the job that I realized that we are just human. I've seen more in one day than probably someone has seen in their whole life. I see faces of death. I see old people, young people, kids. Um, they're images that are hard to erase. And it doesn't hit me until I get home that I can't fix someone's death. I can't fix someone who is broken. I can't fix these things in my head that make me feel like that I'm crazy. Who talks about that? The only time you see a firefighter crying is one of their coworkers die. I think one of the most important things that you have to remember as a first responder, as I've always encouraged my, my guys and girls, is that uh, whatever we do here at work, uh, you don't bring it at home. Don't allow what we do, the stress, the, the, the high energy, the, the, the trauma that we see in, uh, infect or, or to influence what happens at home, that you really need to learn how to compartmentalize it. One of the things that really uh, got my interest on, on um, Help for Heroes was that one of their targets is suicide. Now, um, from a personal level, I've lost several friends uh, from this. One of the guys that I used to work with was actually a, a mentor to me. He was one of the most solid, most uh, squared away guys. He would have been the last person on earth that I would have thought that would have taken his own life. He had a great, great wife, great marriage, beautiful kids, a great home. Everything was perfect uh, with him. And then out of nowhere, he took his own life uh, traumatically. And we all became aware of it more thinking if that could happen to, to this guy, then of course there's probably a lot more people out there in the first responder world that are suffering from this as well. So I'm so thankful that there's organizations like Help for Heroes who are wanting to uh, not just get help for those people, but try to identify it before it really becomes a, a problem or uh, the most serious thing is that they actually are successful in taking their own life. You know, I'll go back over the years when there wasn't anything like Help for Heroes or any of these avenues for uh, you know, stress or, or crisis intervention or whatever, where we just had to, back in the day, bite the bullet and, you know, throw dirt on it and move on. And uh, I, so many times I can see the damage that it did to, to people who this wasn't available to. So I'm so thankful that we do have organizations like Help for Heroes to be able to uh, not just intervene, but, but recognize quickly uh, before things really get bad when people need help and then to have that resource for them to, to reach out to. One of the things that uh, if you're in that situation that you can remember about Help for Heroes is it is confidential. That you can reach out to Help for Heroes and they will uh, be primarily just focused on getting help for your spouse without uh, making any communication or connection with the department itself. So it'll be confidential, they won't be in risk of uh, being you know benched or uh, maybe uh, taken out of work and just reassure them that they know that uh, this is all about getting help for them and not making it known amongst their workers or, or anybody else. When Help for Heroes approached me and asked if, uh, if I'd you know, accept this award, of course I, I felt very humbled. And uh, what came up several times was that uh, they had talked to some of my coworkers and, and they said that I was a mentor to them. And being a mentor uh, means a couple of things, but to me, being a mentor is just being yourself and being available. And also, especially in this line of work, is to be quick and ready to uh, recognize when people need help, is to take the time and, and, and help people who are in a tough place. I know that that's uh, something that uh, we have a lot of opportunities to do uh, in uh, both fire and police and EMS. 
is to uh, help others. And sometimes it means helping others, the people we work with as well.